Tough stories down here. The man starts right now. The manhunt for November 20th is now in progress. To date, you have captured 814 fugitives. Now, join the manhunt with John Walsh. When a child goes missing, sometimes it's up to a parent to figure out what happened. When that parent is half a world away, it can be a harrowing experience. It was May of 2003 just outside of Tel Aviv, Israel. Shimon Masika was trying to get in touch with his son, Ron. Ron had been taking a road trip across America in a van he bought. He hadn't called home in days, and that was unusual. All the time I talk with him, every day, sometime he missed one day, you know, but two, more than two days, it's not happened. I got him the van, the shield, uh... Ron. Use the calling card I gave you. Your mother and I want to know how you're doing. Call home. Shimon was worried. He and Ron were very close, and Ron hadn't returned any of his messages. Shimon then figured out a way to track Ron down. Shimon had given Ron a credit card. And if he knew where Ron had last used the card, he'd at least know where his son was. So Shimon called the credit card company. 4667, that's the account number. She tell me he drew money half hour before. 30 minutes before he drew money. I'm happy, you know. If somebody drew money was the, the credit card, I know it's my son because nobody know the PIN number. Do you know how much money he took out? Yes, he's been taking out about $600 every day for the past six days. He's used the card 37 times. I'm afraid it's maxed out. Where, where, where did he use this card? Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Looks like the last place was Fort Myers, Florida. Shimon knew there were two possibilities. Either Ron had been running up huge bills without telling him, or worse, someone else was using Ron's card. There was only one way to find out. I want to unblock the account. Yes, I understand. I'll be responsible for all the charges, all the money, cease all the charges. While Shimon waited to see if the card would be used again, Thank you. he got in touch with a friend of Ron's who lived in the U.S. Call Gilad. Call Gilad. Gilad Ehrlich lived in San Diego, and he'd helped Ron get his van to start his cross-country trip. No, Mr. Masika, I haven't talked to him in a week either. But the last time you spoke, he seems okay. Gilad, I need to know. Listen, Mr. Masika, uh, Ron told me not to tell you this because he knew you'd get upset, but he was getting pretty bored driving by himself, so in Texas he picked up the, this hitchhiker. Thanks for stopping. No problem. Where are you going? As far as you'll take me. Huh? Okay, so get in. Thank you very much. No problem. Come Ran. What, what, what is it? Ran. R-A-N. Ran Mystica. Cool. It's, it's Israeli. Thank you. Thank you for the ride. No problem. Cops know Ron and the hitchhiker headed east from Texas to Louisiana. Because there's this surveillance tape of Ron and the hitchhiker taken inside a Walmart in Lake Charles, Louisiana on May 2nd, 2003. Police believe after the two men left the Walmart, Ron told the hitchhiker his ride was over. Hey, uh, listen, I'm sorry. I, I hope you don't mind. Don't sweat it, man. Just when we get on the road, drop me off at the interstate. Okay. Cool. I haven't 
talked to him since Texas. Thanks, Gilad. Tudaba. In Israel, Shimon did what any father would do. He contacted the authorities. This is Shimon Masika from Israel. FBI agent Rick Lunn was assigned the case. Shimon Masika was, was very calm and very diligent. I mean, he was willing to provide us anything and everything we needed to assist us in our investigation. The actions Shimon had already taken were about to pay off. On May 7, 2003, Ron's credit card was used again. But it was not used by Ron. It was used by the hitchhiker. Here's an image of the hitchhiker caught by an ATM in Miami. Now the FBI had a face and the strong feeling that finding this guy would be the key to finding Ron Masika. When the FBI shared this information with Shimon, he knew he couldn't just sit still in Israel. So this determined father headed for Miami. But by then, the hitchhiker had already headed south to Key West. And it didn't take long for the hitchhiker to get comfortable in his surroundings, picking up a local woman at a bar and taking her back to the van he'd stolen from Ron Masika. Waitress. Meanwhile, Shimon arrived in Miami, and he didn't come alone. He brought with him a group of Ron's friends, all of them Israeli soldiers. Let's go find this guy. As Shimon headed towards Miami, he checked in with a credit card company. They told him someone had just used his son's card in Key West. That night, Shimon and his friends canvassed Key West. He might be using my son's name, Ram Mesica. It's a gray van. California license, please. If you wanted to park a van around here, where would you do that? You know, probably the old campground. It's, it's about a mile away off Cross Avenue. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Shimon went to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Sure enough, they spotted the van. Uh, nothing yet. Oh, here we got a live one. Here we got a live one, guys. Stand by. She's the deputies called in the FBI. Looks like she's going to be heading south on Coral. All right, we'll pick her up. Within minutes, the woman who had spent the night with the hitchhiker was filling in FBI agents Patricia Thompson and Anthony Russo. I don't know. He was gone when I woke up. What's his name? He told me his name was Trouble. She identified him as Trouble and said that she didn't know another name. And that didn't strike me as particularly odd. I've worked in um, both Miami and Los Angeles, and it's not uncommon for people to use street names and identify one another by nothing more than. We'd found a, a listing in her cell phone for trouble. <laughs> trouble, huh? She was aware that he planned to leave Key West later that day. And um, we instructed her to, to make a lunch date uh, so that she could say goodbye. Just wondering if you want to hook up again. Yeah. How about we start with lunch? One o'clock, Billy's downtown. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. I look forward to it. Where is he? I don't know. He said he'd be here. I don't know, babe. There you go. Wait, that's him. Don't move. Grab that. The first thing I thought was he was going to be the key to, to finding out what the story was with the van, what the story was with the ATM card, but most importantly, what the story was with the victim. But it wasn't going to go quite so easily. It was very easy for us to see him on the street corner one second and have him be gone just that quickly, and that's, that's what happened. I wasn't so much concerned that, poof, he was gone, as I was that, wow, there are a lot of people around here, we gotta find him again quickly. Now the hunt was on. The rest of the story when we return. Hey, you big Elton John fan? Yeah. Well, then here's your dream ticket. You only find it at Best Buy. Dream Ticket is Elton John's spectacular four-disc, four-destination concert DVD. 